Now, the center of most of the world's worship has always been understood to be sacrifice. If you look at the religions of the world, one of the things that most of the religions of the world have in common is the practice of sacrifice. The reason that this is true is because men have a knowledge that is in them from God, and it is a knowledge of their guilt. We know that we are guilty. But these sacrifices are offered up before God as, as substitutes, if you will, for us. Verse 1. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. And he went. But why? This is the fascinating part. Abraham believed that God could raise the dead. Watch this. Verses 4 and 5. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. He doesn't say, listen, the two of us are going, one of us is coming back. He says, the boy and I are going to go over there and worship. Notice again, worship equals sacrifice. The boy and I are going to go over there and worship, and then we are coming back. Why would he believe this? Because of the promise that through Isaac, your offspring will be numbered. But then in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 through 19, By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. God has made a promise. And the only way that God could keep this promise and require this act of obedience is if God is going to raise the boy from the dead. Not only is the center of Abraham's worship sacrifice, not only is the center of Israel's worship sacrifice, but the center of our worship is sacrifice. And Genesis chapter 22 exists in part to remind us of that reality. In fact, not only is the center of our worship sacrifice, but the center of our worship is this very sacrifice. The sacrifice that we find in Genesis chapter 22. Our worship is based on a substitutionary sacrifice. And that is exactly what God provided for Isaac. A substitute. Verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son it was a substitute for his son so abraham called the name of that place the lord will provide what a substitute as it is said to this day on the mount of the lord it shall be provided don't miss that on the mount of the lord what mount on mount moriah it shall be provided what shall be provided on the mountain range of moriah a substitute shall be provided not just for Isaac, but also for Abraham and for all who are Abraham's descendants by faith. But how do we get this? We get this because the God who did not require Abraham to kill his son Isaac actually did on that same mountain range kill his son Jesus, who was our substitute. How do we know? Second Chronicles chapter 3 verse 1. Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah where the Lord had appeared to David his father at the place that David had appointed on the threshing floor of Ordan the Jebusite. Same mountain range. Abraham 2000 BC. Take your son to the top of the mountain and sacrifice him. And he goes to the top of this mountain 
on the mountain range of Moriah and he raises his knife to kill his son and God says, don't take your son's life. There's a substitute over there. And here's what Abraham didn't know. That if he could see God pointing through time, God was not just pointing at the ram in the bush on that day, but he was pointing to another who a thousand years after David would be sacrificed on the same mountain range of Moriah on a hill called Calvary. So that 2,000 years earlier, as God is saying to Abraham, don't kill your boy. There's a substitute for him. He's not just pointing at that ram who was killed that day. He was pointing to the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He was pointing to the sacrifice that stands at the center of all authentic Christian worship because it is that sacrifice that makes us clean. It is that sacrifice that makes us whole. It is that sacrifice that makes us righteous when we come to him by faith. And it is that sacrifice that makes the worship that we offer acceptable to God because God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. How does this happen? Isaiah says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Each of us had turned to his own way, but God hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all so that on the Christ, on the cross, Christ is our substitute and our sinfulness is imputed to him. We don't have to die. Just like Isaac, we don't have to die because there's one who dies in our place and Christ's active obedience and the righteousness that he won is imputed to us. So that as Paul says in Romans, God can be both just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Folks, the center of all human worship has always been sacrifice. But it's wrong. It's wrong. Because it assumes that there is something that we can sacrifice. Even something as precious as another human being that will appease God and take away our sin. It's wrong. The center of Abraham's worship was sacrifice. And it wasn't wrong, it was just short-sighted, it couldn't see far enough. The center of David's worship, the center of Solomon's worship was sacrifice. And it wasn't wrong. It wasn't wrong. It just had no idea what it was foreshadowing. And the center of our worship is sacrifice. Christ died for sin once for all the just for the unjust, in order that they might bring us back to God. Everyone is trying to offer God a sacrifice that is sufficient. And all the while, God is the one who offered a sacrifice that is the only one that has ever been or will ever be sufficient.